Welcome to D-Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you the value of using a dummy load over the internal speaker of your guitar amp while you're troubleshooting it. I have a Fender Blues Deluxe reissue behind me that was brought to the shop for new tubes and the owner wants to get those Illinois caps out of the amp, which I agree with. His complaint is, is when he plays, he hears a little bit of resonation through the amp. So he hits a note and he'll hear a little boop in the background, which is usually an indication of loose elements, especially in the output tubes. So as you know, I do my typical tap test to locate those problems. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the value of using a dummy load resistor while you're doing that testing, rather than the internal speaker on the amplifier. Here we go. So the back cover has been removed for inspection. You can see it is a circus board based amp, but she is super clean. This one is actually in great condition. I have it powered. We're in standby at this point. I'm monitoring the speaker output with my scope. So I'm just clipped across the speaker jack that feeds the internal speaker. Okay. And we're going to monitor on a Tetronix T935A 35 megahertz scope. A real pretty scope. I love the styling of it. This amp runs a pair of 6L6s. And of course, there's a string of 12AX7s in the preamp and for the inverter. They're all groove tubes, original tubes. So the owner wants some new ones in. I've bought some tongue soles. We're also going to remove these Illinois capacitors that are known to fail over time. These don't show any evidence of that, but he wants them changed. So here we go. So the intent of this video is not to show you how I change out caps and plug in tubes. You've already seen that done in the past. What I want to demonstrate here is the old tap test and the advantage of using the dummy load resistor over the internal speaker. I know a lot of you guys don't have dummy loads available, but I'd highly recommend that you make one and use it when you're testing for amps, especially if you're going to do the tap test trying to find little intermittents or loose connections and watching them on your scope. So I'm going to kill the lights. And then we'll just do the typical D-Lab tap test. Right? We have nothing at this point. Why is that? I have not turned standby on. So there's no high voltage. Right? Here we go. Now she's on. So you can see a little bit of a hum level. I have the scope set at 0.1 volts per division. Because you want some sensitivity here so you can see if any of those tubes have little microphonic problems, right? So you go through. Oh, you see that? I'm going to just rock the tube physically. So there's something going on here. Okay, then we go to this tube. You see we've got the same little blip, right? And this is what you would normally see. Because we have the scope set at a very sensitive level at this point. But what's really good is when you tap on these output tubes. See there? See that guy? See how much more sensitive he is versus this one? So I'm guessing when the owner's playing the amp, the speaker's doing its thing, right? Causing a little bit of uh, pressure, right? These tubes are feeling that air pressure and they're probably moving around, right? A little bit. See that? So that might be what he's hearing. But there's another little surprise awaiting you when you're doing this type of testing that I really need to point out. I want you to look at that scope, okay? Concentrate on the scope. I'm not going to tap on nothing. But watch when I talk. <clears throat> you see that? <clears throat> Especially low frequencies. You can see my voice. Because this speaker is a diaphragm. My scope is monitoring across the speaker. So any noise vibrations from like tapping a chassis, tapping tubes, could actually be audible noise going into the speaker and fooling you 
thinking you found a problem while you're trying to isolate noise with the scope. So now let's hook up the dummy load, get the speaker out of the equation, and see if all this sensitivity is real. So we're not going to change anything. I've turned off standby. We'll unplug the speaker. Plug in the little D-Lab demi load that you see in a lot of my videos. Okay? Standby back on. Of course, now you don't hear any humming because the speaker is disconnected. Lights off. Let's go back to the tap test. Now, for sure, if I do this, <clears throat> you won't see it anymore, right? Because we have disconnected the giant microphone, right? Now, I'm going to go back and do my tap test standbys on. Go back to these tubes. Remember we saw those big flashes when I was doing this? Especially when I tapped it like this. Now, that one, that one's real. There is noise on that 12AX7. Here's the inverter. Not so bad. This first two, not bad, but that one, oh yeah, she's got it going on. How about the output tubes? Remember, this one was more sensitive than this one. So here's this one, and here's this one. See, they're not too bad. So I'm guessing the issue that the owner is having is with this tube right here. But now you see that all that sensitivity that we had initially using the internal speaker is gone. So beware guys, if you're troubleshooting your amp and you want to use a speaker, that's okay, but get the speaker away from the amp. Okay, use an external speaker and have it set into a position where your voice or mechanical tapping won't affect it. So that's pretty wild, isn't it? I actually stumbled across this problem a few weeks ago and it just kind of blew it off. It's like, yeah, whatever. And I thought, you know what? I should probably show you guys this so you don't get caught in that trap and start changing out parts that aren't bad, right? So there is the value of using a dummy load resistor. I hope this was good information. D-Lab's here for you guys. We'll see you again. More tech tips on the way from D-Lab Electronics. Thanks for tuning in.